Hey, what's up, Fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily, and today I want to share with you my spring knitting plans for 2024. Before we get started, I'm not wearing knitwear today, but I did want to share with you that I am wearing my Valeris Arts Festival tee, which is a Court of Thorns and Roses merch. I got this from an Etsy store called Chapter Catchers, I believe, and I'll link it in the description box below because I love that it's kind of bookworm merch. I know lots of you love the Akatar series, um, but it's not too like on the nose. So yeah, just if you're interested, I find this just really comfortable for lounging around. It's just a plain cotton t-shirt, but it brings me joy. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. <laughs> but anyway, today we're talking about my spring knitting plans. I'm going to be sharing five projects with you today, but of course these are subject to change. And I also wanted to keep the list just to five projects because I think I can reasonably knit all of these over the next two to three months, but also still have space for other projects to fit in there, depending on how I'm feeling, if something comes up and I want to do a gift knit, for example, or just if my plans change. So let's get into it. The first project that I am planning to knit this spring is the Inclinations Cowl by Andrea Mowry. Now in January and February, I knit the Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry, which is a pentagonal piece of fabric that is knit flat and then seamed together to create a cowl that looks like a triangle scarf when you're wearing it. The Inclinations Cowl is really similar in its shaping and how you seam it together to get the final look, but rather than mosaic knitting, you're using a half fisherman's rib stitch in this pattern. Now, both of those patterns by Andrea Mowry are also both written for spin cycle yarns, which are pretty expensive color changing yarns, but I'm planning to use some yarns that I have in my pantry. I kind of was inspired by this combo when I was doing my yarn pantry update for 2024. So I'm starting with this skein of Noro Sonata in the colorway 40, which doesn't tell us much, but it's this like bright aqua blue. This is 35% cotton, 20% silk, 25% viscose, and 20% polyamide. And in the 100 gram skein, I have 360 meters. So it's pretty substantial. Then I have two skeins of the Manos del Uruguay Marina. This is one of their spring colorways for 2024. And I think it's just gorgeous. Now, this yarn is 100% superwash merino. There's 187 yards or 800 meters per 100 gram skein. So this is a lace weight. And I was really attracted to, again, the mix of aqua with the warmer tones in this yarn. So the plan is to hold these two together. And I think those blues will tie in really, really nicely. Now the pattern calls for two stains each of two colors of the sport weight yarn from Spin Cycle, which I think works up to about 800 meters. So there's a couple things I could do. Depending on what gauge I get holding multiple strands of this together to match this, I could do some extra knitting in the Marina yarn to make the 360 meters of the Sonata last me a little bit longer. Or I also have my leftover Into the Woods, which is the Sendiscarn Sunday Petite Knit colorway. To me, I see this and I think like green toned brown, but those twins who knit are calling it green. I definitely see that it's green. Can it be green and brown? I don't know. <laughs> I think regardless of what we call it, it kind of pulls in whatever this color is here really, really nicely. So if I need to stretch my yardage a little bit more, I can supplement with this 
and it'll provide some contrast too, but also tie really nicely in with all of these colors. And then there's the pink as well. So I think this will be gorgeous. I wear a camel brown wool coat in the winter time and in the fall I have a cropped light blue or like aqua blue puffer jacket. So I think this will suit both of those really nicely. Might not necessarily suit my parka because that's like a cranberry red, but that's what my shift cowl is for. So that's what's coming down in terms of accessories. I'm really excited about this. And I think having sort of the cotton viscose bamboo silk worked up throughout the spring and these bright colors make it a very spring appropriate project to be working on, even if it's not necessarily a spring product that I will be producing. So yeah, thumbnail. My next plan for spring 2024 knitting is a staple t-shirt for myself. I'm going to be knitting the sunshine tee as a test knit for Andrea Goggin Knits and I couldn't be more excited about this. Now in the spirit of skill extending, uh, that inclinations cowl that I just shared with you, I'm looking back at the yarn, that's going to be the first time that I'm doing half fisherman's rib. This t-shirt is not necessarily going to be a lot of new stuff for me, but it's going to be something I haven't done in a really long time. I mean, I guess the unique thing is that it's going to be the first time I'm doing things like short row shaping um, and sleeves in fingering weight yarn, but by and large, the techniques are things that I've done before. This t-shirt is a top-down classic fit with a set-in sleeve. And if I look back on my kind of knitting journey, my first couple of sweaters were seamed. My first in the round sweater was the Sunday sweater by Petite Knit. And then I did two projects with set-in sleeves, which I feel like is kind of uncommon. I didn't really know like set in versus drop shoulder sleeves at the time, but pretty much back to back, I knit the Stockholm V-neck sweater by Petite Knit, which is top down, and the Monica Geller tee by Sari Nordland, which is done bottom up, but both of them have short row shaped sleeve caps or set in sleeves. So those were like fall 2021 projects for me and pretty early garment projects in my kind of knitting lifetime. So I have done the set in sleeve before, but I haven't done a set in sleeve since. I think the Sunshine Tea does have a cabled cast on in it somewhere, which is not something I've done before. So I'm sure there will be a couple of techniques that pop up that I haven't done before, but really this is going to be a test of patience for, for the gauge. For this project, I'm going to be using Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in the colorway Mole. And this is, in my opinion, a true neutral, like perfect medium between gray and brown. If I bring it to my face, I don't think it does anything to my complexion, meaning it doesn't wash me out, but it also doesn't kind of make me glow or, or brighten me like the oranges and the reds and the warm tones tend to. But that's okay. I think, you know, having this tea in a true neutral color will be great for me. Tea and jeans, tea and trousers with a pair of sneakers is really one of my outfit formulas for the spring. So it'll be nice to have a knitted version of a tea that I can really grab for whenever I want to. The Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino is one of my all time favorite yarns. It's probably my favorite knitting for olive base that I've worked with. And I have now worked with the silk, the mohair, the merino, the heavy merino, and the cotton merino. I only haven't worked with their new no waste wool or their compatible cashmere. But otherwise I've worked with most of their bases. And cotton merino is the one I find the most enjoyable to work with. It gives, in my opinion, the most unique fabric that is not necessarily paralleled by yarns you can get from other commercial brands. For example, I think like what 
the Knitting for All of Merino gives you, the Send the Skirt Sunday can also give you, but there's very few 70% cotton, 30% wool yarn equivalents out there. So I really, really enjoy this yarn. It feels very, not slippery, not slick, but kind of like a lotion-y sensation when you work with it. So this is my favorite yarn. I would love to also at some point in time do a sweater with this held double for a DK weight, but we'll start with the tee. I think it's going to have a really nice luster on the body as well. So it'll go with jeans, it'll go with trousers. Really excited for this test knit. The third project that I'd like to work up this spring will probably be a little bit of an experiment. Recently, I purchased a Kobo e-reader for myself. I know a lot of folks love the Kindle, but here in Canada, I went for the Kobo because Kindle is not competitive, competitive, compatible with Canadian library digital content. So like the Overdrive or the Libby app is not compatible with Kindle in Canada, but it is compatible with Kobo. So I got the Kobo. I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, it's a lot easier to hold and read off of than my my big iPad and sort of the, the matte screen is a lot gentler on my eyes. It's more relaxing at bedtime. Uh, but basically, I got one of those like snap-on cases, one of those clear snap-on cases and a pop socket so that I can hold it comfortably. But I would really like to have a sleeve for it when I am transporting it to and from, like if it's in my work bag, for example, I don't want it getting banged up and scratched up because my keys are in there, my lunch is in there, everything's in my work bag, right? So I'd love to have a sleeve for the Kobo. And I would love to try knitting and felting this sleeve. So I pulled some of my leftovers. I've got a ball of Sendiscarn Pure Gint and Maybe it's not going to show too well today. I'm just looking at the colors. We compare side by side. I don't know if that means anything to you. But anyway, that orange feeling, send this garn at Pure Gint. This is what I worked up my storm sweater by Petite Knit in last September. And then I also have the... Retrosaria Rosa Pomar Mondim in the bright orange colorway. This is either, I think this is 101 is the color number. And this is 100% wool as well. And then I have some of the Pearl Soho Good Wool. This is 100% sport weight wool. And this color is called Guava Earth. And this skein was gifted to me by Pearl Soho last year. Um, not sure if I mentioned this already, but Sonata was gifted by Knitting Fever and the Manos del Uruguay yarn was gifted by Manos del Uruguay. The other yarns, the Sunday and the Knitting for Olive, I paid for myself. Um, and these I purchased myself as well. But anyway, my thinking is to potentially hold these three together marl these three together or maybe do like just the just the oranges I don't know or like just these two together I'm not sure but these are my yarn options I want to basically like knit a really big rectangle felt it and then sew it up <laughs> into a sleeve so a couple of things I need to do to make this happen are either try to do a lot of research on how much shrinkage I can expect from felting a rectangle of knitted fabric or knit a swatch and felt it and measure what percentage the swatch shrinks, uh, both in width and in height, and then do some maths from there to figure out what I need to knit the rectangle to in order to get the right dimensions. Ultimately, I need to get it to be, you know, 
the width is more important if I knit it long enough that I can have a flap wherever that flap reaches to isn't as important as making sure the width fits the e-reader when it's stitched up. The reason I'm holding up these buttons is because if I do an envelope flap closure, I think these Pigeon Wishes buttons will look really nice with these red and orange yarns. I think it'll be playful, but still kind of a little sophisticated, if you will. I think two buttons would look really nice. So, so that's the plan. I purchased these buttons from the Knitting Loft, I think also in 2021. So I've had these for, I've had these for a long time and I don't see myself ever knitting a cardigan that I use these buttons on. Namely, because I don't see myself knitting a pink or red or orange cardigan anytime soon. And I know I won't like these on a neutral wool cardigan. So could use a couple of these on a sleeve. I've also had this like weird random idea to like knit a hat and then sew all of my extra buttons onto the hat for kind of this like whimsical, eclectic, buttony hat. But I don't know if that'll ever happen to be honest. Anyway, plan is to do a little bit of a felting experiment. It would be fun to use a seaming stitch that is exposed. I'm thinking of the seaming stitch or the edge stitch that is used on, I think it's Verton Rose's boucle vest. It might still be in testing. I'll see if I can pop in a photo, um, but like a stitch like that, either in the same yarn or in a slightly contrasting yarn could be kind of cute. But I think it'll just be like a practical project, a good experiment. I can just knit a garter rectangle so it doesn't need to be technically complicated to be interesting and experimental, if that makes sense. And then my hope is that if I felt the fabric well enough, if I need to trim down some of the fabric, I'll be okay to do so. And then I should also be able to cut the buttonhole into the felted fabric. So if you have any tips for me on how to do this, I know I'm saying felting, I probably should say like boiling the wool or like I think it's fulling the wool is technically the correct term. Felting would be like if you're using a needle to actually tangle the fibers. Um, which is different from like boiling a knitted fabric um, or fulling a knitted fabric. So I will I will put that there, but but I think this will be fun. And please let me know your tips, tricks, insights, etc. The next thing I'd like to maybe do this spring is a sleeveless top. And I talk about sleeveless tops. I'm like so hot and cold with sleeveless tops. I know for the longest time I was like, I don't like wool sleeveless tops. I don't think they're practical. I have not had success with knitting wool sleeveless tops that fit me and that I find wearable, but I'm always willing to try, I guess. And so I would like to try to knit a sleeveless top this spring. One yarn combination idea that I've had is to use my leftover Knitting for Olive silk and hold it together with a wool. So this is left over from my blouse number one by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I was thinking of potentially holding it with this yarn, which is the Colorista Basic Sock in Or Argenté. I purchased this in Montreal um, last August when Adam and I were there on a trip. And I really love the silver and gold. I really like how it reads gold and it doesn't read like yellow or mucky. But my thinking was to marl these together and potentially use the Nada dress pattern, but just knit the body as long as I can until I run out of yarn and potentially do a slightly deeper dip in the back I knit my Nata dress so it would fully conceal my bra and I would still prefer for that to be the case. However, 
if I'm not going to be able to knit it long enough by doing that, then I would be willing to scoop a little deeper in the back. Um, but I know I like how that fits me. It's a pattern that I already have. It's a shape that I find quite nice on my body. I really like how it comes higher up in the collarbone here and kind of curves in. I enjoy how it emphasizes my shoulders in that way. So that is that is one option for a sleeveless top to knit this spring. And it would still be quite good for cooler days because it'll have the wool, it'll have the silk, which I find is quite warm, and it'll land around a DK weight. My other option for a sleeveless top would be to use my leftover Isire Trio 1. Now this was from my Nata dress, and this yarn is lace weight. It's 350 meters per 100 grams. And it's 50% linen, 30% cotton, and 20% lyocell. And this colorway is called chestnut. It's kind of a, it's a rich cocoa-y brown. I believe this skews a little purple, but it does still give... Actually, I don't know if I would call this warm toned or cool toned. I think it might actually be truly neutral. It's quite it's somewhat close to my hair color, but I think if I compare it to my hair color, it actually might be a little cooler. Um, but in any case, another option would be to hold this double to achieve a fingering weight or potentially even hold it triple to get a heavy spring fingering, maybe close to a sport weight. And my thinking for this yarn would be either to knit another camisole number seven by my favorite things knitwear. Camisole number seven is the wide strapped v-neck one that's done in broken rib stitch. Um, that's not a very size inclusive pattern though. I think it only goes to two or three XL. It is a pattern that I've knit in the past and so I would only consider re-knitting it because I already own the pattern. However, one of my other options for this would be the Chrysler top by Knitting for Olive. Now I have that pattern because I was gifted the Knitting for Olive pattern book late in 2023. And the Chrysler top is worked bottom up. It's all over twisted rib. So you do need to purl through the back loop when it comes time to shape the top here. Um, but that would just be a different pattern that I've not knit before. Other limitations of that pattern are that it does have quite thin straps, so I could modify it to have a thicker I-cord strap, or I could modify it to have two I-cord straps that kind of tie in a bow at the top. I think that's really cute, um, but I have, I have five balls of this, so if I do you know, 350, 700, and then I have 825 meters of this, 825 meters of this. So that's pretty substantial. And sorry, 825 meters of this if I hold it double, um, which is pretty substantial. I could knit pretty much any sleeveless top I want with that quantity. So I could keep looking around at other options. I know Another sleeveless top I've been attracted to is the Bajanus by Emily Louis, which is kind of like a halter racer back silhouette mix, but that is knit at a sport weight gauge. I don't know. I find it harder to get gauges with plant-based yarns. I find I need to knit them a lot tighter for them to look less holy and more tidy. So not too sure about that. So if you have any thoughts or opinions on which sleeveless top might work out better for either of those yarns, either this sort of <laughs> linen does not stick to itself, either for this yarn or for, whoops, 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 whoops. I'm making a tangled mess. For either of these pairings, if you have any ideas, please let me know. 
And the last project that I would like to knit this spring is a pair of textured socks. Now, I enjoy knitting socks in small doses. I find that I've done a lot of fingering weight vanilla socks in the past several years, and I'm kind of over those. And I find DK weight or worsted weight socks more satisfying to knit. They're faster to knit. And I find them cozier and more comfy to be wearing when I'm at home. So I have a couple of thoughts. The main yarn that I'm quite confident I'm going to use is the Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Multi. This one is in the colorway Elliot. There's 375 yards per 100 grams in this. It's 80% superwash fine Highland wool and 20% polyamide. And it is a two ply sock yarn. So this is definitely the base yarn that I wanna use. And there's a few ideas that I've had for sock patterns that I could use if I just want to hold it as a fingering weight. But if I wanted to make a DK weight pair of textured socks, I do also have some leftover Hobby Friends Kid Silk in the colorway Dune. This was gifted to me by Hobby at the very start of 2023, I believe. And I use this to knit my striped socks for their No Shades of Grey challenge. And even though this is like a brown, I think it will kind of just mute out the greens in the sock yarn quite nicely. And with this pairing, I could knit a pair of the Selena socks by my friend Nicole of Professor Pearl. I test knit that sock for her, I want to say it was in 2022 when I test knit those socks and I had used the Rosa Pomar Mondim with a, pa a pair of, I used Rosa Pomar Mondim with the Gepard Garn Kidsetta. I think it's my favorite mohair of all time and loved those socks. But because the Mondim is 100% wool, I ended up felting those in the washing machine, which was kind of upsetting. Um, so my thinking is because this is super wash with the silk mohair, I could get more longevity out of another pair of Selena socks. I have the pattern. I like the pattern. It's a fun broken rib pattern as well. And I think it would just be beautiful and cozy. So yeah, those are all of the project plans that I have for the spring so far. I know for sure I will be prioritizing the sunshine tea because that is a test knit that I will be working on. And, you know, by the time you're seeing this video, I probably will have already cast it on, which is good. You'll see it in some podcast episodes, most definitely. I'd also really like to prioritize the Kobo e-reader sleeve. One, because it's an experiment, um, but also because I think it'll be a really functional project for me to have. Whereas things like the Inclinations Cowl and the socks um, will kind of be projects for more later use. Like I won't be wearing a cowl into the summer months and I certainly won't be wearing socks with mohair in the summer months either. But I think, you know, there's some neutrals, there's some bright colors that are involved in here, but all of them offer a little something different, which I find really exciting. I'm really looking forward to working on these, but also still having space for other projects for more spontaneous inspiration and playfulness. So I, I am always really excited by spring knitting. I think also because with the new year, I think comes a lot of questions about what are your plans for the whole year? What are your intentions for the whole year? We're setting goals and it's really fun, but I think there's some pressure there sometimes. And if you're not certain about what you want to knit, for the year or you're not even sure what you want to knit in February like January can feel like there's like it can feel like there's pressure 
So I feel like by the time I get to the spring, I've kind of got a couple projects for the year under my belt. I'm finding a little bit of a groove. I'm finding what is inspiring me. I'm feeling the energy of the changing seasons. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I love spring. I love spring so much. I love the autumn. I love the summer. I love winter. I love the holidays, but really I feel like the new year doesn't start until the spring sometimes. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed getting to see these project plans today. I am really happy that I was able to show yarns from my pantry for all of these plans. The, the Knitting for Olive was more of a recent acquisition, but some of these yarns are leftovers or yarns I've been, you know, having in my pantry for a long time, but haven't necessarily gotten around to using. And so I'm feeling good about that. And I would love to know what some of your plans are for your spring knitting. And until I get to see you all again, I am wishing you wellness and happy knitting. Bye everyone.